this guided meditation where we will be clearing the trauma that we have around money and there's a lot and of course also from the Babylonian money system and uh, the meditation will start at this time here and I will not get into defining in great detail what the Babylonian money system is or the money magic is but we probably all agree that we and our ancestors most likely encountered a lot of suffering of money and of course suffering that is the food or the luge for the dark side demonic beings and it is also quite reasonable to assume um, that besides plenty of physical uh, persuasion you know, and violence, you know, a lot of magic was performed you know, around the possession of gold and money. Uh, maybe a little different and a lot bloodier than your modern prosperity seminars. So, if you wanted money fast, you know, or if you want to have money fast, go to the lone sharks of the astral world, the satanic and demonic beings, the predators that do not mind giving you an advance of your karma credit card. You can always work it off in suffering later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, you know, when we deal with the dark side, most likely you never get debt free you know, and you overpay a lot. You know? I have to deal with this all the time in my past life regressions with clients because um, these kind of deals, they keep you down in your vibration and they have to be broken. And I have this uh, contract or breaking videos that will be very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's just look at the whole money magic issue from the right perspective. All right. So, if you have to live as a slave, you know, or you might call it a drone, you know, that's somebody that follows orders. Would you be rather be contained by chains or physical violence and torture? You know? Or maybe in a starvation, you know, some Darwinistic you know, survival. <laughs> or um, maybe through a point reward system, like a money system. Right? I mean, being controlled, you know, through money is a lot better than being controlled, you know, by cattle prod, you know, or having a 22 stock in your ear. <laughs> also, any decent anthropologist, you know, will tell you that uh, the money for barter is one of the building blocks of modern civilization. And, and frankly, I mean, who wants to go shopping, you know, with goats and chickens and maybe eggs for change, right? It would be very, very cumbersome. So, what's the rub here? You know? Well, in my personal experience, through by now thousands of past life regressions with my clients, I assure you that we all suffer from deep trauma or the lack of money. There was theft, robbery, murder, betrayal, and conquest around money, as everybody knows from history. Look at Middle America, <laughs> what happened there. And then there was also this dark magic performed, first of all, to attain it, but then a lot of dark magic was performed to turn money into an instrument to extract luge or suffering, you know, from humanity, you know, to feed on these demonic entities. Um, so let us call, you know, this package of thought form, you know, and other contract programs, 
you know, the Babylonian money magic, you know, which is basically a dead slave system. That song, you know, I owe my soul to the company store, is a perfect example, you know, of the Babylonian money system, you know, where you never get out of debt. Another thing to consider is, is it possible that money comes with karma? Yeah. Does dirty money, money that was gotten through dark means, bring bad luck with it? You, know, you might be innocent, but, you know, um, two owners down the road that, you know, this money was gained through a robbery, was murder. Yeah, maybe there is uh, bad luck coming with this money coming to you. you know? uh, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it's definitely true, you know, this inheritance, you know, uh, uh, you know those kind of monies, you know, they're many times they're cursed, especially when it comes from a family of bloodsucker businessmen or slavers, you know, very dangerous thing to get inheritance from this. You know, you may have the money, but never really enjoy it. It just creates havoc in your life. You know? And if karma can travel with money, how about curses? Yeah, and or the thought forms of despair that come with the money, or the greed that come with the money, or the fear around money of not having enough money to handle it. You know? Uh, this is a holographic universe, and quite likely this is true. Yeah? So I should bless my money, and you should bless your money too. Yeah? Um, So-called spiritual money laundering. So I always uh, cleared the crystals that my wife, you know, used for her wands. You know, from any trauma and dark thought forms that were still attached to them. You know, I mean, from minor dynamite mining and the emotions or back pain of the miners or the traders, the merchants, you know, or whatever was picked from the environment. So, in the following guided meditation, we shall be clearing trauma around gold and money. And I have a, you know, story that illustrates this. So I had a client to me that had this unexplainable hate of a certain race. <laughs> and when we went into a past lifetime, um, he was a husband and his wife was very, very sick. And he needed money uh, for the medicine and to pay the doctor. And the, this money lender um, did not want to give him the money. He was just having, you know, this bag of coins and whatever and tossing it and smiling and said nope i'm not gonna give it to you nope and you know teasing him so um, this poor man's wife died and i mean the rest of this life you know this man you know <laughs> sp spent hating uh, this money lender and then subsequently the whole race and um, even influenced my client in, in this incarnation. So once uh, this person was released, um, and this ghost you know, was reunited with his wife again, uh, this whole problem just disappeared like anything. But there was, a, you know, one a lot of suffering about not having money. And then there's also the attachment around money and gold. And I have another cool story about this. So um, once I was, um, you know, commissioned by a treasure hunter. So um, I took her under, and we actually um, found a treasure that was hidden in a mine shaft. Um, she saw it, asked me. She was very uh, clairvoyant. And there were uh, three ghosts with it guarding the treasure. So there was the fire marshal, no, not fire marshal, the marshal that was guarding, um, it, I think it was payroll and whatever, you know, money was there. And it, well, he took a shot defending this and doing the train robbery. This was in, in Arizona, the Wild West. So, uh, 
um, Midwest area. And uh, there was uh, a robber that also took one in the gut, um, you know, with the shootout with that marshal. And then there was an old lady that did not want to part with her purse and made a big scene. And there popped her too. And so they were all um, attached and guarding um, this treasure, you know, making sure that nobody would find it. So they were stuck there. And uh, there, this consciousness is not available to the soul and it will affect um, people in a parallel timeline. Yeah, very interesting. And, <laughs> and then there are, of course, also a lot of promises around gold and money. Um, like, you know, sharing it and, and, uh, and so on, or bringing wealth. And uh, many times so this does not happen, and then these guilts or promises are still hang around. And, oh, yeah, so much guilt and shame around money. Uh, for one thing, uh, sometimes not sharing your money. People die, and you're rich and in luxury. And... Uh, in some community, this was very much looked down upon you know, as greedy. And um, also, sometimes uh, we had to sell out to make money. Mm -hmm. Selling out in all kinds of ways, compromising our integrity. Yeah, it happens. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, of course, also debt. You know, where uh, there's a karmic debt around it. And with that come also contracts around gold and money. And, and these are all things uh, that can come uh, with your ancestors through those lines. You know, you uh, suffer the sins of your fathers. You know, this is the biblical description of that. And, I mean, it's true. You know, um, whatever affected the ancestor has a bleed over on us and many curses. You know, um, all good old times always affect the descendants. I mean, they're formulated in that way, too. Um, the good thing is, um, we can, because we also suffer the consequences of our ancestors' deeds, we can speak and intervene on behalf of the ancestors. And in my um, teachings, I take advantage of this big time. <laughs> and, um, of course, when there is dark magic or dark energy around money, uh, nothing good comes from this. I mean, we all know this um, saying, uh, you know, easy money also goes fast. But whenever in past lifetimes um, somebody did a deal with the dark side and got, you know, get money, I mean, it has to come from somewhere. You know, if it's fast, uh, it was never enjoyed. You know, there were too many problems, whether it was disease or cheating or um, anything. The, the, the wealth was never enjoyed. It was always a bummer lifetime as such. So there's a lot of trauma and attachment around money. And a lot of our ancestors and our own aspects probably got stuck in the lower dimensions. Maybe trapped in faults like heavens or through other issues too, maybe. You know, due to, again, greed, they don't want to let go of their company and whatever goal they had. And so that's just the normal suffering through attachments and, uh, you know, let's say, Darwinistic um, suffering. Uh, but, you know, there's also a, a magic on the highest level, like the Sumerian Anunnakis, that is known as the Babylonian money magic. So these groups, um, they believe that certain spells and rituals could be performed in order to bring about abundance. You know? And this knowledge was, of course, you know, been passed down through the generations. Uh, but also, you know, on the mundane level, by controlling, you know, the flow of money and the supply, these groups have been able to manipulate markets mm -hmm, and create a system of debt and servitude that has uh, kept people in a state of poverty and oppression. Mm -hmm. Like the big um, depression in the USA in the 20s, which was purposefully engineered you know, by the bankers and their overlords. I mean, any decent... <laughs> 
historian who agree with this. You know, this is mainstream knowledge. Well, welcome to my channel, Truths for Ascension by Wolfgang, and I, Wolfgang. And thanks for giving me a thumbs up and sharing this video your, or your experiences. Um, if you are new to this channel, you know, please make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you'll be notified, you know, if I do any new releases. I also do person-to-person -person Skype or Zoom sessions, and uh, they are more powerful than these um, shotgun, general shotgun meditations, of course. I can tune completely into you and uh, see what's going on and customize and help you through the hard spots. You know, so just send me an email, you know, or look in the information below to get in touch with me. So before we go into the in, into the guided meditation, absolutely no driving, no driving. You're going to be so spaced out, this is going to be really dangerous. Mm -hmm. and so if you're not driving, then, you know, sit down on an office chair with your feet touching the ground. And so some of you may also lay on the bed and want to go to sleep afterwards. This um, happens quite naturally as you relax. And um, it is maybe not as potent as being completely aware and breathing and having, you know, conscious decisions given your almonds. Yes. Um, but it's better than not doing it at all. <laughs> and you will, you know, fall asleep really nicely. So it's a good thing. And you can actually, when you play it on your computer, this um, meditation here, um, right-click it, and it will uh, can be put onto loop, and you can have it all night long. It's a cool trick. I use it quite a lot. So close your eyes, and whenever I say Amen, you know, just align with the intent and think Amen in your mind too. I mean, be with it with your intent. It's your life. So first of all, we ask Absolute Source of all things, of all being, normally known as God, um, to make sure that everything that happens in and from this guided meditation here is going to be for the highest good, in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. We also ask that we be open, completely open, to all the healing that is available to us. We ask our high self and our spirit guides to clear any blocks and resistances, you know, like programs or vows or curses that, or entities that prevent us from assimilating whatever is most benevolent for us. You know, let our high self, our divine aspect, make these decisions. Amen. Um, and we asked for Mother Earth and our spirit guides to please clear any blocks and resistances that are in our force field that block or create resistances in our connection with your Earth Mother. Um, this could be entities like parasites or cords or program, or black magic, astral visualization, and devices, or thought forms. To name a few, and then of course all kinds of technologies that humanity is barely aware about. So we'd like to have this all cleared now. Amen. Mm -hmm. And now you imagine that you just walk onto this beautiful beach. It's all by yourself. It's just a tropical beach and you just lay down on that beach. And it has beautiful sand. And first of all, you just tune into the waves. The rhythm of waves, so relaxing. And then you become aware of this warm sand. 
You saw millions of little crystals, little pieces of rock, mostly quartz. Millions of them that have been in the sun all day long, every day, being charged with all kinds of information. These are little holographic devices, full of chi. And they have a consciousness. And you just smile. Yeah, you might telepathically just smile like a hello. And you pull their love, their warmth into your whole body. Allow it to move into every cell. This is stored sunlight. And it feels so good. And on the exhale, you smile and thank your gratitude to those crystal beings. And with the rhythm of the ocean, but with your own breath, but in the same way, you're having this loving exchange with the sand beings, with this millions of tiny little consciousness. It feels so good. You breathe so easily and deeply now. You even smell the salt water, yes. Deep and easy in a space where you can hear the air flowing through your nostrils. Now you start connecting more and more deeper. Go deeper into the earth. Much deeper. We connect with the earth herself, her consciousness. She is like a mother. She smart now you all your incarnations and she loves you unconditionally. But just like a baby nursing from the mother, just pull her love into you, through your back or through your feet, depending on your position. And then send your love down to her, back and forth, just like the waves of the ocean. It's just up and down, and then smile, 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 so you're open to the love vibration and frequencies. And you feel how your body start to tingle and just becomes more radiant. And again, we ask for our spirit guides and Mother Earth to clear any resistances between you and her. And this could be even offenses against her done in past lifetimes or by our ancestors. Maybe we poisoned rivers or made blood sacrifices on power spots and neural spots, and contaminated her, or did curses on lands or rivers. We apologize for this and we ask that these be cleared now. Whatever harm was done, we give permission. Make sure you agree. And it takes about five seconds, and now the energy should shift. Mm -hmm. Just keep on running this love, absorb her love, and send your love down. By now, you're having a wonderful connection with you. And now you put your tongue to the palate. This is the top of the roof of your mouth. And you imagine that through the crown of your head, you connect to Milky Way Galaxy. Just imagine Milky Way Galaxy being there where maybe your ceiling is. On the astral plane, distance doesn't really matter that much. 
and smile and pull this beautiful love and support and the updates from the Milky Way galaxy into your whole being, but just start pulling it down your spine, into your coccyx. Then on the exhale, you send your love for the some deep breath, breathe deep, deep breath, oh, that feels good, so this is love that's going up and down through your spine, through your celestial chakras that are above your head, you start purifying this with the chief now we also ask the spirit guides in Milky Way Galaxy, the super intelligence, to please clear as many resistances and trauma to so-called samskaras in our celestial chakras, in our spinal cord, the shushumna, and other subtle body aspects. Please clear it from parasites, dark thought forms, attachments, discarnates, and demonic entities, whatever is not from our soul and not helping us. Um, 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 just breathe back and forth. Uh -huh, and we'll start to kick in now, so you should get this elevator feeling. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm, smile. And now, um, when you only breathe heaven love, you turn into a space cadet. So it is good for humans to breathe in a balance of heaven and earth energy. You know, we are angelic beings in monkey bodies here right now. And so start pulling simultaneously the love from the heavens as well as from the earth into your heart. And just keep it there and just focus on the inhale, pulling in the love from heaven and earth simultaneously into your heart. And smile, 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 smile. And the more you do this, the lighter you seem to become. You seem to be expanding too. And there might be even a point where you become so light that it feels as if you're lifting up. And of course, with every exhale, you release also much more tension and awareness of your physical body and open up to your spiritual body. So you become very fluffy and expanded but also very tiny small at the same time. It is very strange, but awesome. And as you expand with every inhale of this love, you seem to be floating higher and higher and higher and higher into your own mind. And you ask your own high self aspect to start manifesting in your body. There's a radiance, there's an awareness, there's a consciousness. Please do so now. Um, and smile. And yeah, you know many of you if you feel tingle or energizing, just smile. And we ask the spirit guides to clear any resistance that are there still in your emotional or physical or mental aspects so that this can properly integrate now. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. And start absorbing joyfully this nourishing, loving energy that is flowing into you from the heaven and the earth in the presence of this divine consciousness. Uh -huh. And we ask now to be shown what is a yes, and that this should be a flow of energy from the heart to the head, something like this. Mm 
to ask your high self to show you a yes now. Amen. And now ask your high self to show you a no, and it would feel like a flow of energy from the heart to the feet, it would feel like this. Now we ask your high self to show you a no. Um, So let's go ahead and uh, just see, you know, what the response is after each question. And you may notice, you may not notice for some, um, after some time you may get a hang of it. Even if you get the answer for a few questions, right, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. So um, whatever you can get, be grateful. And some of you are very, very psychic and they may see you know, or get very clear answers. These are the people that I can work with very well. Yeah, we definitely will have a lot of advantages working with me. All right, so first question. Um, do you have a personal karma around money and gold? Yes or no? And do you have a lot? Yes or no? Uh -huh. Is there a lot of trauma and karma from ancestors around not having gold and money affecting you? Yes or no? Is there a lot of attachment around gold and money, like an unhealthy fixation coming over from past lifetimes from you and your ancestors in the opinion of your high self, yes or no? Now, do you have bad karma around gold and money? Yes or no? And of course, the stronger the flow, you know, the stronger the karma, I would say. You know, these uh, yes or no's are kind of dynamic. Uh -huh. Now, do you have good karma around gold and money? Yes or no? Do you still have a lot of outstanding promises around gold and money? Yes or no? So, is a lot owed to you? Yes or no? Do you owe a lot to others? Yes. And of course, we ask that, you know, this be cleared by the grace of God, you know, that this all be taken care of nicely. Um, Do you carry any guilt and shame around gold and money, like not sharing or selling out, or having gained it through, let's say, dark means, yes or no? Now, this is a big one. Pay attention. 
Do you still run any self-punishment programs around gold and money? Yes or no? Let's ask again to make sure. Do you still carry any self-punishment programs because of gold or money? Yes or no? Are there a lot of illegal contracts around gold and money affecting you and your ancestors? Yes or no? Is there a lot of dark magic around the gold and money inherited attached to it? that nothing good comes from the inheritance and the money. Yes or no? And we like to have this cleared now, if our high self can do so. We give it permission. Amen. Now, are there any dark curses around the gold and money that you got from others? You know, um, this could be inheritance, like land, or jewelry, or collectibles. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Of course, you can investigate and further on if you get a positive here. Yeah. Are there any aspects of yourself, of your own soul, or of your ancestors still trapped or stuck in the lower astrals of false heavens due to issues connected with gold or money? Yes or no? And we asked our high selves and the ascension teams of love and light that work with us to please help liberate those now and help them to move on. Amen. Are there any discarnates and entities that follow us around due to money? Maybe they think we owe them, or um, maybe, you know, um, for some reason they like our lifestyle or whatever it is. Um, are there some discarnates and entities following us around due to money? Yes or no? And of course, we like to have those moved on to by our high self. Mm -hmm. Are there any ancestors or aspects of our own soul that are trapped due to money in some way? Yes or no? Are there any aspects of our ancestors, of our own soul, um, stuck because they're guarding treasures you know, of some kind? Yes or no? And we asked our high self if this is not our obligation, but put on to us to please release them and bring them home and reunite them with our soul again. Um. Are 
are the ancestors or aspects of our soul attached to um, earthly things due to greed? Yes or no? And we like to have them also send help now. Amen, amen, amen. Now beings like leprechauns that are connected with wealth as known by the Irish, um, they live all over the world. Hmm? Of course these funny little guys representation, they're quite offensive. To them they're not. You know, they're quite dignified humanoid beings. Very sophisticated. And um, so it's kind of offensive description, but they're all over the place. <laughs> and um, some of our ancestors um, knew how to trap them or try to force them in some way um, to um, get wealth. And um, of course um, I've come across this in many lifetimes, um, past life regressions, and um, that wealth that came through blackmailing <laughs> or oppressing leprechauns of course, it never worked out well. And then, of course, on top of it, you know, you're having all those powerful curses from leprechauns, right? So, um, are you and your ancestors still in good standing with leprechauns? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. uh, let's just make sure we ask the other way around, too. Um, are there any offenses still being counted between you and leprechauns and your ancestors, yes or no? And if you got a yes, I strongly recommend that you do, you know, releasing nature spirits uh, video. That is uh, no joke. Of course, uh, gold and wealth is also associated with the uh, dragons. And um, in some worlds, um, you know, we had dealings with dragons. And so, believe it or not, in some past life regressions, I come also into these old worlds um, before the floods. And um, where there are giants and, and dragons. Um, uh, it's a more astral level, I would say, but... You know, so these beings exist and of course there were many different interpretations of what these dragon consciousness are but they are definitely associated with liking gold and with wealth so are we in good standing with dragons yes or no Are our ancestors in good standing with dragons, yes or no? Okay, if you're not, let's apologize to the dragons now. Um, uh, um. Are there other beings um, with which we still have bad karma and bad blood? You know, around money and gold, yes or no? And what are those? Please show us now. Um, Are there still any contracts between you and your ancestors with dark powers over money and gold that are still um, functioning and should be outdated, yes or no? We like to have those cleared now as much as possible. Amen. And we asked Archangel Michael and the other beings of love and light to please enforce this. Um, um, um.
Also, please clear any curses on our ancestors and ourselves around gold and money. Amen, amen, amen. And also clear any vows of revenge around money, you know, from both sides of the fence. Whether it's our enemies or maybe we are the people's enemies. Are you still carrying any traumatic imprints or programs and other negative self-destructive belief system around gold and money? Yes or no? And if yes, we like to have this cleared by our high self and our spirit guides now as much as possible. Amen. Is there any conflict, karma, around your family life, around gold and money, yes or no? Do you still have any dark karma and trauma around sex, gold and money, yes or no? Do you have any dark trauma around career, gold and money, yes or no? Do you still have any conflict and trauma around love, gold and money, yes or no? Yeah, sometimes we marry for love, or we don't marry because we're poor. <laughs> like to have that trauma cleared as much as possible. Do you still carry any conflict and trauma around health, gold and money, yes or no? Are there any conflicting vows and promises from different lifetimes around gold and money, yes or no? I'd really like to have this cleared now, amen, amen, amen. Are there any spells and curses on you or your ancestors to always have conflict around gold and money? Yes or no? Are there any spells and curses on you to maybe have money but to never enjoy it? You know, it never turns out well for you, yes or no. Are there any spells and curses on you and your ancestors to lose the money as soon as you have it? You know, it disappears like water held in a hand. Are there any disconnects from other lifetimes or even hitchhikers um, that are conflicting with us and each other around gold and money in our life? Yes or no? Are 
are there any personal karmic lessons that you volunteer to learn in this lifetime around gold and money? Yes or no? And what is the most important lesson that you wanted to learn? Do you have contradictory environmental stimulated ideas around gold and money in you? Like capitalism versus socialism or communism? You know, having this inner fight in you, yes or no? In other words, are you plagued by conflicting belief systems around money? Yes or no? This could be a system like where poverty is seen as a virtue, like in monks, you know, or renunciants or religious fanatics. Are you affected by these belief systems? Yes or no? And you like to have this cleared if it's for our highest good now. Um. Are you conditioned by conflicting upbringing around gold and money? In a way like, do as I say, not as I do. Yes or no? Did the dark side in a past lifetime give you a loose, loose choice where it's like the village or the family that still keeps you in an inner conflict loop around gold and money? Yes or no? Are you still carrying conflicting programming from early childhood that leads to limiting or conflicting beliefs around money and wealth? Yes or no? And you like to have those cleared pretty please? Amen. Did you experience any rejection from family, school, and co-workers around wealth and money, yes or no? And we like to have that karma clear too. So the magic of the highest level, like the Sumerian Anunnaki did, this known in our case as the Babylonian money magic. Mm -hmm. So how much of your total trauma in this lifetime is due to a Babylonian money magic? Let's say if you have a hundred percent of trauma, you know whatever that trauma is, mm -hmm. but in this lifetime, you know, so how much of that trauma comes from Babylonian money magic. This helps. Now how much of your total past life trauma is from Babylonian money magic? And how much of your total trauma that you experience in this lifetime you know, 
is coming from Babylonian many magic from all incarnations, including ancestors, you know, other dimensions and other planetary systems. And we plead now to Source and to our High Self and Spirit Guides to please, please, please clear all the trauma and effects of the money magic, you know, also clear any programs, etc. And we ask for our own incarnations and that of our ancestors and those of our counterparts mm -hmm, in parallel timelines, in future timelines, in future lives, in past lifetimes, in other universes you know, that are stuck due to um, trauma around money or wealth. Mm -hmm. And please be liberated. Amen. Amen. Um. So we call on all the aspects that are willing to change, that are stuck around money and gold. We also call in all the aspects that are set in their ways, even if it costs us dearly. We like to have them also brought. And we asked our divine guidance for a new perspective, you know, that it be sent to them to be helped. And we also sent them some love. And we asked that to please be brought um, due to the Arcturian love healing and ascension temples. And that they be reunited with their lost loved ones that are also still stuck on the astral planes, like babies, etc. But especially everybody, you know, that's stuck around trauma with gold, wealth, and money. And anybody also that's still stuck in the false light heavens, you know, due to this kind of wealth trauma. And show them then the higher as well as the hidden aspects of the incarnation. What was karma? What was volunteered for to learn as a lesson? And what was sabotaged by the dark side? And then help them with forgiveness. And once they forgive and ask for forgiveness, please remove you know, um, all this hidden stuff, you know. Um, like cloaking spells and technologies, any camouflage. And also make visible and expose what is trickery, misdirection, or hidden agenda, or legalized fine print. Mm -hmm. And have all offenders brought to the courts of the highest divine justice. Mm -hmm. And take care of it, you know, clear any entanglement that still binds them, like trauma, binding of vows, curses, contracts, love spells or technology, crazy spells, plans, deals, promises, all kinds of contract and then candle magic, black magic, you know, and any forms of bombs or booby traps, and claws or hooks, cords, chains, shackles, crown of thorns, crucifixion implants, and everything else that hasn't been mentioned, but needs to leave our space at this time. So please clear those now. Um, and smile. Oh, and now it should be kicking in. Mm -hmm. Upflow of energy above your head, that's only how that works out. And we asked our high self and spirit guides to please also remove any hitchhiking entities that have attached to us. And also return any valuable energy that got stolen from us or that we squandered away. Hmm? Amen, Amen, Amen. And smile. 
and we ask for the presence of our expert healing teams that act for the highest good and divine harmony for the most pleasant outcomes to please transmute any physical, astral, emotional, mental and spiritual trauma to healing energy and upgrade us to our divine blueprint as much as possible now. Um. And one, two, three, you're completely back in vacant day consciousness again, or keep snoozing your really, really deep snooze. Um. Well, welcome back. And thank you for making it so far. Take it easy, take a drink of water, lots of water, probably a quart or a liter of water minimum. If you get a headache, you need more water. And uh, as it's fresh in your mind, uh, maybe you want to share some of your experiences in your notes here below, you know, for everybody else to see. And if you responded well, um, you know, the private session will knock your socks off um, and just send me an email the information is below um, so this is just a shotgun meditation and uh, you may have found out that you have issues here and there and so this is you know just uh, to show you um, you know where it, you need more work but you definitely should feel lighter and, you know some clearing has been done if you run this all night long, um, this should be quite some pronounced effect. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, thank me for giving me thumbs up, you know, so we get more viewers. And um, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell, and you know, all the meditations that I do, they are um, for different aspects of life. And they are quite important, because in our different incarnations, we probably live in all kinds of um, stations in life, whether we are king or beggar or murderer or murdered. Mm -hmm. You know, we uh, experience all these karmas and traumata, and the more we clear this, the more our real personality, our soul essence, um, becomes available to us, and your life becomes better, you feel lighter, you're more yourself. Uh, I hope this helps. I love you a long time. Namaste.